If you ever log back into your Elementor website and realize that things have changed from this kind of interface to this kind of interface, then just know that your Elementor website is updated to Elementor 3.12 or 3.12 and above. And in this video, I'm going to take you through on these two specific changes, which actually include some other interesting updates like the mega menu and a lot more. But in this video, we're going to look into the new Elementor top bar and the new Elementor UI or user interface. Let's get started. So to be able to have this kind of interface, all you have to do is come back here to your plugins area and make sure that you have the Elementor version. This is in the core version of Elementor, so you have to update from version 3.11 or any lower version to version 3.12. That way, you will be able to access the new interface. Automatically, when you open up any of your pages with Elementor, you will have this kind of new interface. It's a little bit darker and literally the container border colors were changed and also the styling for the icons themselves. So if we try like to add a new container and then we want to look up for some widgets over here, you realize that this actually changed in terms of the style. So this they don't change the functionality of how the widgets are working like or how you can use them in Elementor, but it is to do with the user interface and the user experience. So generally that's it. But for me, this is what stood out, which is the Elementor top bar right over here. Of course, this is not coming by default once you install or update to Elementor 3.12, it is still in the experiments. And to enable that, you have to come back to your WordPress dashboard, come to Elementor, you're going to come to settings, you have to come here to features, and under the experiments, just scroll down below here, there is a new option called editor top bar. Apparently, it is in the alpha release. So at the moment, it will not be active by default once you update to Elementor 3.12. But if you want to test it out, you can just come over here, activate, and then scroll down here and save changes. That way, you'll have access to the Elementor top bar right over here. So just briefly, let me take you through what is happening. So you remember in the old editor, come here to the hamburger icon and that's where we could access the site settings and all that stuff. Now that has changed for us to simply click over here on the Elementor logo, which is also animated, looks cool. And once you click over here, then you can access the theme builder, the history or the editing history, the user preferences, and the keyboard shortcuts. Now, this over here takes you to the WordPress dashboard. Now, we never had that option right over here, but somehow Elementor has reorganized this and packaged them in a way that they give us a better experience. Now, when, for example, someone clicks on user experience, now this takes them to the option to set their preferences. For example, changing the UI theme. Of course, this is for people who love, for example, the dark mode or the light mode. In this case, I use auto detect because I set up everything on my computer to be running on the dark mode. So that automatically adopts right here in the Elementor editor. Now the other part are the keyboard shortcuts in case you want to navigate Elementor using shortcuts. I've always been forgetting the shortcut to the finder, but in this update, there is one thing that I really, really, really liked. And that is the fact that they have put the finder over here in the navigator, but I'm going to come back to that a bit later in the video. So in case you want to navigate your website using keyboard shortcuts for Elementor, just click over there and then you can access, you know, those shortcuts. For example, if you want to undo and you're using a Mac computer, just press Command, Shift and Z. So you remember that earlier on, if you want to have access to the widgets, we would just come right over here to the grid. It was kind of like a grid icon. When you clicked there, then you had access to the widgets. Now, if I ask you here where the widgets are, you cannot tell me where we can add widgets from, apart from clicking in the container to add a widget, and that's where the widgets menu will show up. I think somehow here Elementor missed out on something because if they migrated this same icon over here and gave it to us over here, we could 
it could be easy for us to understand that probably the widgets have been moved up here. But until I'm able to come and hover over this icon, that's when I'm able to know that actually the widgets are hidden there. Yeah, maybe Elementor would consider that, but yeah, that's my thought. So anyway, if you want to add a widget, just come back here to the plus icon and just drag your, you know, for example, image widget, then you can start adding your images. The other bit that we can look into is right over here for the site settings. Earlier on in the old editor, if we wanted to access the site settings, we could just come over here and then click on the site settings under the hamburger icon. Now we just have to click over on these icons. I don't know how they call them. Let me look into here the documentation and see. I was thinking that there is a name for that specific icon that was used for the site settings, but I can't find it either. Yeah, but this is the icon for the site settings. In case you want to set up your global colors, your global fonts, the typography, the site identity, and all that stuff. The second most loved feature for me in Elementor is the Navigator. I don't know if you guys know how much I use the Navigator, but now it has been changed to another name called Structure with the icon for layers. Of course, earlier in the other version, we still had that icon down below here and it was named Navigator uh, with the layers, you know, icon. Yes or oh no, I don't know how to take in this, but I think we could still adopt Navigator and Structure, but maybe they have a reason for that. So anyway, that's how we can access the site Navigator and obviously here you can have your uh, Navigator and you're able to navigate through you know, your website. Literally nothing much changed here apart from the color and the, you know, the font styling or the typography. That's it for the navigator or for the structure as they call it here. Now there is the middle part of our top bar in the editor. So here we have the page settings. So earlier on, uh, we had to go down below here to the settings part. And that's where we could make changes to the page settings. Now it is as easy as going back here to the header in the editor or the top bar as they call it in this case and you can access your page settings and all that stuff. Yeah, kudos to that because I think this is straightforward and makes, you know, making some of these changes quick and easy. Now we have the responsive mode added over here in the middle of the top bar. So I can access the tablet device as well as the mobile device. So anyway, that's how the top bar looks like. But now we have the very last part of the top bar. And this is where my favorite feature is actually hidden, which is the finder in this case. Earlier on, you knew that we had to press a certain keyboard shortcut or simply we had to go straight here into the hamburger icon. And then that's where we could find the finder. But now Elementor has made it so easy for us to access the finder because hey, in that website building process, we are always needing to jump from one part of the website to another. So if I hit into here the search term or the query that I want to access, it's first of all going to bring me the recent five sections or site paths that I've worked on on this website. And then it will also suggest for me other sections of my website that I can access right from here. And then also suggest, you know, if I can create a page, a template or a section or a container, or whatever. And the good thing is that if you click on any of these pages, for example, if I go to the uh, contact page and now it will take me straight to that page. So without leaving the editor, this here is something I really like because I remember in the earlier versions of Elementor, we somehow had to first exit the editor and then go back to pages and then somehow have to you know, open up the page with Elementor. That is if we didn't have to use the finder. But now, yes, the finder is put over here and I can just go back, hit H and be able to access my home page. Just click over there and straight, I'm taken back into the home page inside the Elementor editor. Now, the other part of this top bar is the help section or this icon here with a question mark. This will take you straight to the Elementor help or the documentations that help you to look up for things in case you are confused or you are not sure of how to implement a certain feature of Elementor in your website. And then in case you want to preview the changes, that's where you click. Remember before we had to come down below here to the eye and now that eye has been moved up here and there we are able to see the or to check out the previews of our website. Now, the last one, which is 
The magic button is a publish button, which also enables us to, for example, save a draft or even save as a template. Earlier before, we had it down below here, a little bit smaller, but I think I like the new way it has been set up over here. Very visible, bold and accessible. So I don't know what you guys think about the new UI. Of course, I've seen some people in the community talking about, I don't like the new UI, it looks ugly and you know, all those comments. But as a person who loves, you know, progress to see things get better. And also I love colors. So like in the new editor, I really love how this looks like. I like how it has been put together and I would give them really a seven out of a 10. But also I've seen people who are requesting for color changes, for example, for some of these widgets and the containers and also for some of these buttons because maybe some of them don't like pink. But I think there is a way to go around that by adding probably some custom code to your editor and then you are able to set up the colors that you want to use. And then also the other thing I realized is that some people were talking about how if you highlight a certain part of your, for example, if I highlight these words over here, you don't see the highlight. So why is that happening? So from my theme setup, the highlight color is green. So if I'm highlighting a section of my website where the background is green, high chances I'm not going to see anything as a highlight. But let me come and highlight, you know, something here. You see that my highlight is appearing. If I come and highlight uh, something in here, like the word Lorem Ipsum, you see it is visible. So the reason why it wasn't visible before it's because my background color here is green. Before I close up this video, I want to mention that if you want to have access or to see how to build this exact website you see over right here, please check out the video linked in the description of this video. And that way you'll have access to the complete tutorial on how to create this kind of website using Elementor. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Let me know your thoughts about the new Elementor interface and the user experience, including the top bar and everything I've shared in this video. I'll be happy to hear from you. And if you like the video, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a good time and goodbye.